Welcome to Aramis Studios, everyone. I hope you're having a great day. In this mini tutorial, we're gonna talk about how to create a hexagon grid in 3D space. I'll also add in a few notes of how you would do something similar in a 2D space. Let's get into it. Now we have our example hexagon grid here, and it looks pretty great. With a little bit of effort here, we can get something like this just for you. So one of the key points with a hexagon grid is we're going to have to translate from just a normal grid of X, Y coordinates into a bunch of pixel locations. Um, the, the complicated part of this is that with each row, there's a little bit of offset left and right and north and south to get these to kind of uh, pair up nicely like this. So you can see here the top of this hexagon I'm pointing at here is not in the same, is not directly kind of in line with the hexagon in the row above it. There's a little bit of offset and we have the same sort of thing left and right you can see. So we have to, we have to do some adjustments on the fly to figure this out. Luckily though, this is a, a problem that's been solved already. Amit Patel has a great article about hexagon grids. I've added the link below and I would suggest reading through it a few times. It really took me a, a while to, to sit with this and, and, and mess around with it with my own example project. So I'd highly recommend going through and reading it. He has some implementation guides for various languages, uh, but most of the math is pretty easy to translate into uh, GD script here. All right, let's dive into the implementation of this. So if we go to our map and find the attached script, we can see we have three export variables, which we're going to use in the editor to just adjust these on the fly really nice and quickly. We have our cell size. This is gonna help determine those offsets left and right. With the 3D implementation, one one usually gets you to where you need to be. Uh, if this was 2D, you're gonna to have to fiddle with this. It's, it's kind of gonna be related to the pixel size uh, left and right of that, and that number will just It'll be a little bit fiddlier to figure out. So having this as an export variable can help you out really quickly there. Map size is gonna tell us our, how big the map we wanna generate is. Um, once you actually implement this, you're gonna maybe have something else or a, a very dynamic map that changes or um, just a bunch of different implementations where you're not just setting a hard coded value, you might have a bunch of different types of tiles you're creating. Your hexagon tile pack scene here uh, in my case, if we come down, that's this scene here, uh, which is just a, a mesh that I created in, in Blender and imported very quickly. Going back here on ready, we're going to call generate hex tile map, iterate through our different map sizes to create a bunch of cells, instantiate our hex from the pack scene, uh, create that cell and then call cell to pixel, which is the key piece from Amit's article. Again, link in the description below. Uh, he has a little bit of math here for, for pointy hexagons. Uh, you would change this a little bit if you were doing a flat hexagon, flat being that the top of that is flat as opposed to pointy. The one piece I wanna call out is here's where we're using that cell size to, to give us our X offset and our Y offset. So this is the key piece of understanding. The rest of this math, you'll set it once and kind of can forget it after that. So we get that tile position. Uh, if we were doing a 2D game, this would just be simply hex tile dot position equals tile position. But since we're in 3D space, we need to set the translation, which is a vector three. Uh, in this case, the X gets mapped into X. Uh, we don't care about the height. So Y is gonna be set to zero. And then our tile position of Y gets set into the Z variable. And then lastly, we're going to add that as a child of the map node we're in. Running this by clicking F5 gives us our tile map. That wraps up this little mini tutorial. Let me know in the comments below if you have any questions or things you want me to elaborate on in future tutorials. I appreciate you taking the time to hang out with me and I'll see you in the next one. Thanks.